guys, it's Rogaway here and I'm back with another tutorial. And today we are looking at the basics of programming, of game programming. And uh, specifically we're going to be using Adobe Animate ActionScript 3. Um, this is a great program to use. It's got uh, all the sophisticated programming techniques and procedures that you're going to need and you can carry this over to ActionScript or other programming languages because it has a very similar format. In recent years uh, ActionScript hasn't been as supported as it was in the past but that doesn't make it irrelevant. It's still a great program to learn and the coding techniques are what's really important here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Animate and we're going to get it loaded up. As you can see, mine's already good to go. And we are going to be creating an ActionScript 3 file, a new ActionScript 3 file. So click that. And inside Animate, um, if you are not familiar with it, we have our timeline down here. Okay, we've got our properties and library over on the side, and we have our stage here. And um, we can just zoom in over here, we'll fit in the window and get it open. We're not too worried about what's going on on the stage right now because we are going to be focusing more on the coding end of things. And so in the timeline down here, I've got two tabs. I have timeline and I have output. We're going to actually switch it to output so I can see what my code is doing or I'm going to be outputting commands to this output window as we'll see in a second. So let's talk about some very basic coding things that you're going to need. We're going to talk a little bit about the lingo, uh, the language of coders. And uh, so we're going to go to window and we're going to go to actions. And this is our coding window that's going to open up. Now, Animate comes with a bunch of pre-made code scripts that we could use, but I would rather teach you all the basics first before we go into any of that. Um, I think we should do it all manually so that you learn exactly what each code uh, is, is doing, okay? Each line of code, what it's doing. So let's start with a very basic command and in coding when we want to store information uh, if we want to create objects that store information basically the the heart of a program or an application we need to create variables and a variable is a way of naming an object that we're going to use later to store information so in ActionScript you would type VAR stands for variable and it tells us that all this code that we are writing right now is on layer one, uh, frame one of the timeline. That's important later because as we get more scenes and more layers, it's important to know what each one is doing. So variable, and let's create a variable. And in order to create a variable, you can give it any name, preferably without numbers. Um, and try to keep special characters to a minimum, I would say just underscores. But let's call this one a number. Okay, a number. Now, like I said, it can be anything. I'm just saying this variable is a number. And once you have created a variable, you can use a colon like that to tell it what type of variable it is. Now we're going to focus on three main ones and it'll cover most of the things we're going to do. The first one is an integer and in order to, to create an integer variable we type int all right and what we've just created is a variable that is called a number and it is an integer. An integer is a variable that 
is whole numbers. It's only numbers. That's why I called it a number. Because it's an integer variable, it can only contain numbers. We're going to also give it a value. And when assigning a value, you hit equals. Excuse me. We'll say that this variable right now is 5. Okay? So let's look at what we did. We created a variable. We used the variable command. We called it a number. This is called the identifier. And we told it that it is an integer. Okay, so it's a, a type of variable. It's an integer, and it is right now, it, it has a value of 5. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a different type. So we're going to put variable again. And I'm going to call this one text. Or you know what? Let's just in case that creates a conflict, I'm going to call it words. And this type of variable is going to be a string variable. All right? And a string variable is a variable that can hold letters. And basically a string of characters. It can also hold numbers too. But a string is basically a long... It doesn't even have to be long. It could be anything. It could be one single word. But it, it's looking for a string of letters. So in this case, I'm going to say, Hello, world. And don't forget, very importantly, oops, I, might, I think I have to put these around. Yeah, there we go. Don't forget the semicolon at the end because that's very important that you have that at the end of each one. Now let's look at one more type of variable. VAR. This one's going to be called... Um, Let's just call it true or false. And this type of variable is called a Boolean. It's kind of a funny name. But a Boolean is super important. You're going to see that we are going to be using Booleans a lot. A Boolean is a data type that can only be true or false. It can only have two values, either true or false. And this is very important, as we'll see later on. Okay, so that is the third type that we're going to look at. And I'm going to say that it is true right now. Okay, so if you look at what we've done, we've created three variables. One is called a number, one is called words, one is called true or false. And they're, each one are different types of variables. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you that this is actually working. And it's actually doing something. And the way I'm going to do that is with a command called trace. And the trace command will send values from my program to the output window. All right, so let's say I want to find out what the value of a number is. I can put a, oops, it has to be the exact same. I put a capital, so a number. Okay, so I've got my variable set up. Remember that for a number, we told it that the value is 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be tracing out a number. And if everything works properly, I should end up with a 5 down in my output. So let's test that. You don't have to save this, by the way, because it's, it's within this window. We're going to go Control, Test. And there we go. You see nothing on here, but down here in the output, we see 5. Okay? So, we could trace out each one if we wanted to. We can see exactly what each one is doing. 
So I just copied and pasted that. Let's do words. And let's copy and paste. And let's do true or false. And what it should give us in the output is the value of each one. So let's test that again. Five, hello world, and true. Okay, those are each of the values that we had for each of those. Okay, so we have output successfully three variables and they are displaying properly in the output. Okay, these three types of variables are the foundation for so many things. I mean, when we're talking about game and app development, these three things can do so much. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at something else. We're going to look at what's called an event. And an event is, um, an easy way to think of it is, an event is something that's happening. It's, it's an event. It's something that's happening. So let's use a concert, for example. We are going to create an event. And... The, the base or the once we've created an event we need to tell it what happens at that event if it's a concert what uh, what entertainers are going to be performing uh, what's going to go on what's the schedule of the event uh, that we're going to and that is called a function so first of all we're going to create an event and I'm going to do it quite simply by putting add capital E event listener okay and there's all sorts of different types of event listeners ones that we can use to listen for somebody typing on the keyboard or in this case we're just going to do something with um, an object on the the current frame we're going to type event dot enter frame which basically means it's going to check for this event to happen on the current frame and since this is running at 24 frames a second it's going to be checking for this event 24 times every second now an easy way to think of before I finish this tag an easy way to think of an event listener is like a um, radio station. All right, it's sending out this signal. And actually, no, you know what? A radio station is not a good example. More like uh, radar. Okay, when um, let's say the army uses radar to detect things that are coming, that's what this is like. It's sending out a signal and waiting to get a response all right i hope that makes sense we're, we're basically setting up this radar tower right now and we're listening for this event to happen okay so we're setting up a listener it's listening for an event and the last thing here after our comma is to give it a name and i'm going to call this one uh, let's call it movement. It can be any name. All right, don't forget to close it and put the semicolon, very important. So we've told it now that to, to listen for an event that's called movement. And the movement, sorry, the movement is not actually the event. This is the event movement is our function okay what happens when it detects movement all right and I know this might be confusing right now but follow along it'll make sense very soon we're gonna just slide the actions window out of the way for now and on our stage we are going to first of all I'm going to just reset it to small screen 
that'll put all our windows in the right spots and it'll bring our timeline uh, sorry our tools back over let's open up actions again all right I don't know why mine wasn't set for that but it should have been I'm gonna just slide this over so I can keep it just kind of on the side here and we're going to create an object on the stage it could be anything all right in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an oval okay so nothing that amazing I'm gonna just put an oval or a circle I guess on the screen okay and I'm going to select this object okay so that it you can see it's full of little dots that's selected I just did that with the arrow and with animate it works off of mostly off of movie clips so we're gonna take this object we're gonna modify it we're gonna convert it to a symbol and we're gonna make sure that that symbol type is a movie clip I'm gonna call it green circle okay this registration point is super important but for now I'm going to just leave it in the middle and I'm gonna hit OK and there it is okay we have a circle that is now a movie clip now let me move this over again with our movie clip selected we're gonna to go to properties in programming instances are super important and basically an instance is a version or a copy of something that we've created so each copy of this circle for example would be an instance of the first circle that I made hopefully that makes sense and I'm gonna give it a name I'm gonna give it the same name I'm gonna call it green circle okay so right now oh, sorry under properties this circle is called green circle that's its instance name and now when we jump back to our code we can tell our code to do something with green circle because that's the instance name we just gave it so let's do that let's go function okay function movement because that's the name of the function we told it to listen for we have to use these fancy little parentheses and actually I have to tell it something here as well we're going to put e event like that okay this attaches movement to an event all right and we are going to tell it now we're going to give it some commands and the way we do this is super easy in action script if we want to affect an object in this case you want to affect the instance of this green circle we simply type green circle the same name that we gave it in properties right there under the instance name and there's a lot of things we can do with this what you need to know and this is going back to math uh, and there is a lot of math in programming the x-axis is the horizontal movement or line all these horizontal rows is the x-axis the y-axis is the vertical alright so if we want to set this green circle to be on some sort of act uh, y -ax sorry x-axis let's say we want it to go to a specific spot on the stage let's start with that something simple we can go to window and we can go to info I'm just gonna pull this over and you can see that we have X and Y and we can see as we move our mouse around it changes 
So let's say I wanted that green circle to go to, uh, let's say, X345 and Y300. Well, here's how I would do that. I would put dot X equals, okay, let, I like to space my stuff out. Doesn't matter, you can, um, you can do it how you want, but let's say the X, 345, semicolon, green circle, Y equals, what did I say? 300. And what that should do is run this event. Okay, the event is going to be happening. Oh, you'll notice up here, sorry, I, I should mention one thing. When we add event listeners, depending on the type that we're using, it needs to import uh, packages, but it'll do this automatically. Depending on what we use down here, it'll import what it needs above everything else. Okay, sorry, that's an important thing I forgot to mention. So don't worry about this, this is just um, animate is importing its events, uh, its packages, its events package. So, sorry, going back to this, we added a listener, an event listener, we called the function movement, and then what is movement, what does it do down here, function movement, it moves the green circle to 345, 300. And if I run that as a test, that's exactly what it did. It took the circle from the top left corner and it moved it exactly where we wanted it. Okay, so it did exactly what we wanted it to do. And it used the center dot to position at that point. Okay, now check it out. There is a lot of things we can do with this. Let's get rid of the Y axis. Axis. I always say axis, axis, get rid of the Y axis. And let's say we want the green circle to increase along the X axis by one uh, every, every second, I guess it would go 24 because it's running at 24 frames a second. We can simply put plus plus, green circle dot x plus plus, and the plus plus is telling it increase by one every time this every time this uh, event listener plays. So what we should see is this circle slowly move across the stage, and let's test it out. That's exactly what happens. As this plays, it's adding one to the x-axis of the green circle every time this plays. Now let's say we want to make it go up by five instead, so it moves a little faster. We could put x plus or equals five. And what this basically means is we are taking the current green circle x-axis and we are adding five it's going to equal a new x-axis and it's going to keep repeating that so once again we test that out and it moves by five this controls the speed of how fast that green circle moves across the stage there's a lot of cool things we can do and there's a lot of um commands that we can learn here's another one I'll leave you with and then we will go on to something else but let's say I want the green circle to follow my mouse movements by putting mouse X and mouse Y like so when I test that the green circle now follows the movements of my mouse. Okay, so pretty cool. So let's just review what we what we learned here, and I'll explain each part.
Packages get imported automatically depending on what types of events we create. Animate will automatically figure out what it needs to create. It'll automatically figure out the package it needs uh, depending on what we use. Variables are super important and we saw that there's three different types that we're going to be using. First one is an integer. It's numbers, whole numbers. The second one is a string and you can assign it um, a string of characters or numbers, basically a sentence or a word. The third one is a boolean and its value is either true or false. I showed you the trace command which will output some sort of message to the output window at the bottom. And we saw that we can assign value to our variables that we create. We also can give them identifier names. Variable, identifier, variable type, and value. And it repeats. We also looked at adding event listeners and events. And we created a function called movement. So the function movement, okay, we basically told it to watch for the green circle and to affect the green circle. The green circle was an instance that we created of a movie clip called Green Circle. All right, I know this is probably not the most exciting stuff here, guys, but... It's very important you understand these terms now before we move on any further. Variables, integers, strings, booleans, events, functions, identifier tags, X and Y axis. This is super important stuff for upcoming creation of games. And if you want to get into any sort of programming, you need to know what these things do. All right. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at applying this to movement, as you'll see. So stay tuned for that. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Till next time, thanks for watching.